Hi, guys. Um, my name is Sonia. Uh, I am a generalist at Industrial Light and Magic. I've been there for a little over two years now. Um, I graduated from Noman in 2012, so like three years ago. Um, one thing before I get started, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about, about the difference between, because I've worked in TV, I worked in commercials, and I worked in film. Um, and I also did theme park rides, that's actually what I'm doing right now. Um, <laughs> So the difference between well, what, what I found is that every studio that you go to is, does things and is a little bit different. So what I really encourage you, um, when you, when you go out there, you graduate, you're ready to go, and if you get the opportunity, try to jump around as much as you can. Learn as much in the process. If you're not tied down, go travel. Go outside the country. That's what VFX right now is fantastic for. Go to London, go to Singapore, go to Vancouver. You know, get those experiences in there and figure out what it is that you like to do. Because we do spend, at the end of the day, we do spend a lot of time at work. You want to make sure that you really love the place that you're at and that you like what you're doing. Um, because, for example, like, actually, like, I started out as a matte painter and I transitioned over into a full 3D environment artist. Something I never thought I would do, but here I am. So, that's just a little advice for me. So I figured I'd start off with showing you some of my student work. So this is what I did at Noman. Uh, I started off, I was in the generalist track, but I really wanted to be a matte painter. So I sort of, uh, I don't know if any of you guys know Max Dan, but you can ask him. I was very adamant about pushing the matte painting part of everything. So that's what I wanted to do. Um, in my last term here, I applied to Rhythm and Hues, and crazy enough, I got a job. Um, R&H was a fantastic experience for me. Um, they uh, really took the time to train you, uh, mostly because a lot of them use proprietary software. So I think we spent about half a week, if not even a full week, learning the software, really getting to know the pipeline, and that was really great. Uh, everything I know about projections today is what I learned there. Um, the team we had there was fantastic. Um, the people were great. Uh, yeah, so my first show there was Into the Storm. Maybe not the best movie, but still fun to work on. Uh, I started off doing a lot of skies. I did 24 sky domes, day to night. <laughs> but uh, it was a great learning experience. And the more we got into it, you know, the more my supervisors realized that I was also very technical. I could do modeling, I could do projection work. So. The longer I stayed there, the more I was handed challenging work. Uh, you know, I did a good job and it kept coming. Until, you know, uh, I got a phone call from my friend on a Sunday night. RNH filed for bankruptcy. So, yeah, <laughs> that's not really what you want to hear. Um, it was not the best experience. Uh, I don't recommend it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, you do learn something from it, uh, you know, it actually does bring you closer together, uh, you know, my matte painting friends from those days, you know, we still keep in touch and it definitely bonds you in a strange way. Um, but also, you know, you get to a point where you're like, you're freaking out, you don't know what to do, like, I'm never going to work again, what's going on? Um, reality is, you'll be fine. You'll find the next job. Just, you know, don't give up hope. It's going to be okay. You might be out of work for a little bit, but that goes really weird. Um, you'll be all right. You know, even if you have a little bit of downtime, use that downtime wisely. You know, take it to relax, take it to work on your reel, learn a new tool, learn a new software. Just keep working on your things. Talk to your friends. Networking is everything in this industry. You know, if you go here, your classmates, they can probably help you get your next job, um, which is exactly what happened for me. Um, I talked to my friend who was at the mill. I submitted him my reel. He passed it along, and lo and behold, that was my next job. So keep in touch. Should anything like that ever happen to you, I hope it doesn't, but don't freak out. It's going to be okay. Um, so the next job, as I mentioned, was the mill. Commercial work. 
So commercials are fantastic when you get fresh out of school because you get real work incredibly fast. You know, you can get just, yeah, it's amazing. Um, I got there, I did about five different Chevy commercials in, what, like two months? Um, it, was, it was great. Also, you get to do a lot of different things and they also have a lot of different projects that call for different tasks. So if you show them that you can do a lot of different things, chances are you get to do them. Um, so this was the very first uh, painting that I got to do. It's actually a hybrid, it's a 3D hybrid. Um, I did some 3D modeling and then I painted over everything. Uh, and that was quite the challenge because I had never done that before. So, you know, good times. Um, but nothing like a challenge, who doesn't love those? Um, this is something, you know, this is sort of a breakdown of exactly that type of work that I was just talking about. Basic 3D render, this was the plate, in case you're wondering. Um, and this is the final painting. This was for an offer card that was shown, I think, on TV, I think it ran. And then I went on to Adidas Climate Warm. Uh, this was different in that I got to do projections. So I got to work, I got to model this entire background here and project it on. This was the plate right here. So that was great because at r and I had done only projection in proprietary software. So this time I got to do it in Maya. Slightly different, same idea. And this was different. Yes, that is David Beckham. Just, you know, for the girls. Um, so this was great because I was technically a compositor on this one. Uh, even though my title was Matte Painter, we had living plates, we had live plates um, so that I had to set up in Nuke and then blend in Nuke. So never thought I could do that. You know, I'd taken my two Nuke compositing classes here, you know, I was like, sure, all right, I'm ready. No, I really wasn't, but you know. Uh, you, you learn and you go and you try to do the best job that you can and if you get stuck, you know, you, you go over to your friend and be like, hey, how do I do this? And they help you out. So in the end, you get it done. So again, the mill was great for that because I got to do all these different things which I would not have been able to do at R&H. Uh, that is the great thing about commercials. Downside is your hours are pretty long. Makes sense, shorter deadlines, you still have to deliver high quality work, your hours are gonna be longer. Ideally, do it for you know a couple months, take a break, go back to it. Try not to burn yourself out. So after that, um, I went to Stargate Studios. Um, I had done my internship at Stargate, so they were practically family to me and they needed help, so I got to go back. Um, at Stargate, I did some special projects, which was this. It was called Dubai into the Future. You know, we just added a couple of skyscrapers and just modified it up a little bit. Um, and then I also did some work on Burn Notice, Dracula, and Haven. Um, I think I only have one. This is Burn Notice. Um, TV is also great if you do it right out of school um, because you do get material for your reel faster as well. Um, the workload can vary depending on episodes, so your hours can vary. Um, Stargate Studios in particular was more traditional matte painting work for me. It was just straight up Photoshop work, which is refreshing, you know, after all this crazy compositing stuff. Um, yeah, that's about, I think that's, that's all I got for Stargate Studios and TV. Um, a lot of green screen set extension, traditional works. Um, except, oh, I did do a scar for on Grey's Anatomy. That was different. I know, who would have thought, you know, a map painter does scars? We do. All right, and then uh, I was still at Stargate, minding my own little business, and then I get a phone call. ILM. I'm like, huh? <laughs> What's going on? Um, I got a phone call from ILM. They had an, a generalist apprenticeship in the fall and they had gotten my name. I was like, hmm, I never contacted you. Where did you get my name from? Uh, well, that was thanks to Shannon. 
So if you guys go here, Shannon Wiggins, our placement manager here, be nice to her. <laughs> you know, she helps you get a job. Um, so without me knowing, she had submitted my reel to ILM for the apprenticeship. Um, a couple interviews in, I don't know how, because I had only done matte painting, I got the apprenticeship. So off I went to San Francisco, and I get there, and you know, I'm excited, I'm thinking, yes, they're going to teach me everything that they know. And my first assignment is create a shot in 3DS Max. I'd never opened 3DS Max before. I'm like, okay, so we're going to get training, right? Uh, yeah, I think we have a digital tutors account you can access. <laughs> I'm like, huh, oh, awesome. <laughs> so yeah, uh, let me just tell you, uh, you'll never learn a software faster than when you have to do it on the job. <laughs> so somehow I did figure it out. I learned it. Um, you know, thankfully I was introduced to other artists there that I could ask questions to. Of course, I was trying not to ask too many, not to become obnoxious. You know, although I think sometimes I did cross the line a little bit, but overall we got it done. Uh, impressive enough. And then, even more impressive, they wanted to keep me. I'm like, all right, awesome. What's my first show? Tomorrowland. I'm like, okay, cool. Sounds great. So, what do I get to do? Well, we have this. This is the map of Tomorrowland. This is what the art department from the client has created. So we have all, see all these white things. We have, that's all basic geometry. So we have that. So now acetize the entire city. I'm like, huh? <laughs> like, what do you mean? <laughs> I mean, like, just, you know, create, like, break it up into city sections and, you know, acetize it, make sense of it, you know, and then, you know, and then we'll go from there. I'm like, okay. Sure. I had no idea how. I'm like, I don't know what he was talking about. Um, but, you know, all right, fine. I'll. F yeah, how do you do that? Or, like, you know, like, how, where do you even start? You know, like, how do you name these things? Like, all these things. Thankfully, you know, I pretty much, those were the questions that I did, I did go up and ask my supervisor, because at that point, I'm like, mm, a little help. You know, just a little. Um, you know, and he was kind enough to, you know, point out, like, help me out a little bit. You know, we broke it up into city sections. We broke it up into specific buildings. And it all made sense. And, you know, then the next question was like, okay, well, cool, now we have this. Like, how do you go from these things to <laughs> a real-looking city? And I have a little clip for you guys, if I can get out of this. Let's see. Oop. Ha -ha. So this is sort of how we started. I'm just going to let it run through and I'll talk over it as it's looping through. So this is basically how we started doing this. Um, the very first image that you saw was pretty much what we got from the art, from the art department. It's one of our very first passes, um, which is where we tried, you know, I'm actually going to pause real quick. This is sort of like one of our very first passes where we first started to make sense of things. You know, we figured out the design language, the shape language, the composition, you know, what was the overall theme of everything. So this was our, like our very first passes, basic layout. And then after that, you started breaking this up. Um, and I can even, I actually know this city better than anybody. Um, so this is actually what we like to call the Founders Plaza. This is what we called um, city section A. I know it's very original, but you know. Sorry. Uh, monitor tower is up here. This was the monitor plaza area. And this was the Archinature feature. So yes, creative names, I know. But, so this is how we started. And then we pretty much broke up those sections and we passed them off to different artists. So every artist basically took one of these sections and started to push it further. So that we tried to basically push everything up another 10%, another 20%. So that when we show the full image to the client, everything has the same level of finish. Because you don't want to push one section 100% and the others at 10%. Um, 
it, it doesn't look right, it's going to throw everything off. And also, if you push one thing to a certain level, that means the rest have to match that exactly the same. So it's better push everything up together slowly and build it up. Obviously, you also want to get notes as you go. And that's pretty much what we did for the rest of these things here. Let it run through one more time. And then I'm going to have one more clip for you, one more clip for you. So these are just some of the shots that uh, I did on Tomorrowland. The great thing at ILM in the journalist department is that we get to do a lot of different things. So I got to do everything from matte painting work to modeling, texturing, look dev. I even did some rigging, which again, not <laughs> was not a good idea. I'm not a good rigger. So, you know, I was glad when that was over. Um, to animation, uh, I'm also not a good animator, but, you know, thankfully it was just cars, so I was able to pull that off. Um, to pre-comp. Um, so it was a lot of different, it was a lot of, it's a lot of variety, which is, you know, exciting. It keeps you interested, it keeps you going, and also challenges you. Um, the way we also work, we actually uh, we interact a lot with the um, with our other side of the pipeline. So, the, as journalists, we often do uh, environment work, um, whereas you know the other side of the pipeline does mostly hero elements, creature work, um, sometimes also um, buildings, but generally mostly hero items. So, there's a lot of passing off assets with them, talking to them, you know, converting things for them. Um, so it's, you know, it definitely keeps you busy and keeps you going during the, throughout the day. But yeah, I think that's about all I've got. I think that's all i got. Yeah, I think I'm going to wrap this up here. <laughs> you ready?